Too many guys are calling me now, like this call we just had. They ran out of 90 degree corner block on their site and they need some more. Or they ran out of taper top, or they ran out of T block, and they shut the job down waiting for extra block. Now, the ideal is to have enough 90s, right? Obviously, that's the best. But when you run out, you run out, and then you have a few options. Let's get on the phone and look for a dealer that's actually got some. And in this season, all ICFs are swamped. We're busy. The, the call for ICFs has gone through the roof because the wood prices are so high. And because of that, you're having to wait longer to get blocked. And when you wait longer to get blocked, sometimes your job gets stalled because you ran out of a block or two. So we need to fix this. You can take straight block and you, make, you can make 90s out of it. You can make T block, you can make taper top with a straight block. So as long as you have enough straight block, you should be able to get your job finished. So let's see how easy this is. Now, if you took our training, then you already know this because I did 90s using straight block in our training to, to cover exactly this. But I just wanted a short video here just to show you guys. And it's really this simple. Take a full straight block, four foot long, Take another one and cut it in half, and you'll have two pieces that are 24 inches long each, right? Now I'm gonna take this piece, and I want it to intersect with this. Now I'm not gonna cut angles and 45s and stuff like that. This isn't rocket science. Just take out your saw. I'm gonna butt this up against. I'm actually gonna butt it, let's see. I will go against like this. No, I'm gonna go flush right here, and I'm gonna cut the inside. So let's make a mark there. Just happen to have a marker. I'm gonna mark that inside. And then I know that this 24 inch piece is gonna butt up against this face. So this one's getting cut here, and this one is gonna be coming here. Actually, no, it's gonna be butting up against this face, and this one's gonna be butting up against that face. So now I wanna bring this on the side, and I'm gonna butt it up against this one, and I'm gonna mark this side right here, because that's where I want it to butt right there. So I just make my mark up and across, and there it is. It's that simple. So let's see, let's make this cut and see how easy this really is. You'll notice I'm making square cuts. By making square cuts, it butts things up and it holds concrete better than a 45. It really does. So now I'm gonna cut the, the web. And that's my scrap. Really on the outside, there's not much for scrap. So that's one part, now I take this part here and I'll tell you what's a lot easier. I've, I've, I need to make this cut, but it's actually easier to cut the web first. So I'm gonna do that. And then once I've cut the web, I'll make this cut. So that's that part. Those come together like this, and look at that. Isn't that a nice looking 90? Doesn't look strong at all, does it? But it is, it works. And you can do your job with this and get the concrete placed. You still have a fastening zone to do siding and things like that. It's just, you have to hold this during concrete placement. Now there's two things you need to do for that. One by four. Or if you really got a lot of money, use OSB. But one by fours work. Put one here, screw it onto the straps. Put another one on this side and extend it past and screw through into this piece of wood on this side. So it's gonna look like this and that's gonna button up this outside. For the inside, really easy. Take a piece of plywood and screw it to a two by four or a two by six. Put that to the inside. 
you can screw into a web on this side and screw into the web on this side. And you just make this wide enough so it's going to catch the webs. And that's going to be bulletproof. You're going to pour concrete into that, full height, no problem, that's going to hold. And once you strip this off, it's going to look great. And in most cases, you're only doing one or two block at the top of the wall. So it's really not that big a deal. So now, this is going to take longer. It's going to be kind of a pain to do it. And a lot of guys will argue, I'll never do that. But the way I look at it, get the job done and get to your next job and get your check, put it in the bank, and start becoming a profitable company. It's that easy. It's really simple. So that's 90s. And I also, this was the, the 90 that I used in our training course. This is the six inch one, the bottom one's eight inch. I use some tape temporarily to hold it in place as I build. And I don't put any wood strapping on until I'm finished the job. So I'll tape it temporarily. I'll put my bracing up. I'll get it all level and straight so it's all good. And then I'll strap it. And the very last thing I'll do is I'll put some spray foam in if I need to. Now, spray foam's a thing that you need to hide. Don't let any of your workers use it until you're ready to use it. Because if they start spray foaming this stuff as you build, it'll be a train wreck. The corners will be not straight. And you really want to level everything and plumb it all up first. So that's how you do 90s. Very, very simple. And that will clip right on top of the other 90. So that's how to do that. Now, let's do a quick T-wall. To do a T-wall, and this could be a six inch coming to an eight inch, a four inch coming to an eight inch or six inch, doesn't really matter what you're working with. But there's just a few things to know with a T-wall. Find out where it's gonna be. Now, use our T's. If you, if you can, use the T-blocks we have because they work fantastic. But if you don't have them and you need to get the job done, there's a few different things to think about. First is, you do the one wall, that one's going through. That's your common wall. And a lot of jobs that we do, I do a lot of three plexes, four plexes, five plexes, eight plexes, where it's a house after house after house with the demising walls. And what we'll do is we'll do all the exterior walls, and that's gonna add up to a lot of concrete. And so we look at it like this. If we just do the outside walls and we place concrete, that's gonna be, Oh, half day, three quarters of a day just placing concrete because they're pretty large jobs. Then we'll come back another day and do all the mising walls after. And that way the concrete walls, the ones that are already placed, they're actually gonna hold the demising walls in place and be your forming. And it actually works, it's really, really good. And the way to do that is just stick pieces of rebar out, put some 90s in, pour concrete, and then after concrete you would cut the foam out and you'd butt your demising wall up and then pour concrete in this one works great. We do that quite often. And in fact, I've done a lot of jobs where we will put the whole main floor on. And as we pour the main floor walls, we'll pour the demising walls for the basement. And we have those strips of plywood off the floor. That works actually pretty slick. But here we have a T-wall. I'm going to bring this 8-inch against an 8-inch. You find out exactly where you need to be, and then you cut that out. Now, ideally, you don't cut the tie in this wall, if, it's, if they're both hollow, if you're gonna do this all in one section. You would cut to the inside. So here, I'm gonna cut it like that, right along these two ties, cut that out and it's ideal. That's not always gonna work that way though. In this case, let's say I have to come here and I have to cut this one tie out. So let's do that and I'll show you what that looks like. I like cutting a tie first. So there, I've cut it out. Look how weak that got. Now I have this here section. The concrete's going to come along here and it's going to want to blow this backside out. 
A lot of concrete pressure going in there. This one's coming up against like this. And always have this wall butt up against this one. I see too many guys that have it so that this cut is the full width to the outside of this. And then as they tie it up, this one just gets sucked into that wall and there's nothing really holding it. So it's really good to do it like this. Now, maybe you can see that a little bit better. Now you want to get a piece of rebar, put it on the inside, and then with tie wire, come back in, tie wire it, and spin a nail around and tighten it up. Do that on every row, and it's actually going to hold it together quite well. And then on the back side, you want to strap it. Put a strap, screw that on, and that's going to transfer the load from these ties to this one that got cut and bring strength back into that area so that when you're placing concrete, you're not going to bulge that or blow it out. So that's how to do a T on site. Okay, now taper top. My goodness, taper top. Can you believe guys have shut jobs down because they ran out of taper tops? And they're scrambling, driving around looking for a taper top. So in the amount of time it takes to talk about that, you could just take this, there I've got a taper. Didn't take long. Sometimes you just need to do the work. Now, when you do this, do this more than a 45 degree angle because in concrete, loads transfer to 45 degree angle. So you want to be more than a 45. Blatantly more. Make it look like you're more. So go as, as far as you can. Now I could go a little bit more with this. I did that pretty quick. But you can go, if I show you here, you can go up to the plastic there on that. You see that? And you really want to do this cut before you put the block onto the wall because you don't want all this garbage dropping into the wall. That doesn't look too good. So make your cuts off on the ground and then put them onto the job. So that's how you do a taper top. And you know what? When we do estimates on a job, we will do a 90 degree corner and we'll only allow for taper top up against the 90 because it's, it's a lot easier working with a 90. I know you can take a taper top and you can make the same corner as I just showed you, but ideally, I just use a 90 at the corners and I cut a taper into it, pour concrete. It's that easy. And for a taper, you don't even have to cut at the ties. You can go like this. I can make a, a cut down. And here I can go even more than 45 if I want to do it this way. Never cut towards yourself. And if you do a pocket like that in between every one, that'll give you a really good taper. And you can do double taper then. And you can give yourself that ledge that you need. So that's doing taper tops. And I think that pretty well covers it. Like, be creative. And you don't have to do a 90. I just did a job, or I was on a job, it wasn't my job, where they had a whole bunch of corners and none of them were 90 degree, none of them were 45. We didn't know what they were going to be. So we just used a bunch of straights and they made their own corners and I have a video coming out shortly with that. So that pretty well covers it. Be creative on your job site and just get the job done. And fill your bank account up and order more block. And if you guys can think of any other videos that you'd like to see, just let me know. Thanks. What a mess. Hey, I'm just finishing the editing on this video and I came to realize that I sort of stumbled when I was marking out that 90 with straights. And so I just want to show you one more quick way to do it that it takes a little bit of the thinking out of it and it helps you out. You just take a straight, because that's, how, well, that's what you're going to use to make your 90s. At the top of the wall, you'll have a 90, so it's sitting there. Now, there are a couple of knobs here. You've got to break these off or cut them off. I just break them off. Take your straight, put it on the block, and line up the webs. So your studs are lined up, and that will show me, if I look here, 
and mark it, this will be right on a cut line, exactly. Right there, that's where I'm gonna cut it. And if I flip it around the other way on the 90 and I look on the inside, it's actually right along this web or this stud. That's where I'm gonna need to cut it and I'll have to cut one web. So let's do that. You got your saw cutting right along a web. This one's out here right on a cut line. Normally I like cutting the web first because it's a lot easier if I do that, but when you're doing video, you forget all this kind of stuff. That's your scrap on that one. Now that just locks on. So it looks good here, it's nice and flush. This is gonna be a factory end that's gonna go out. Now you could have moved this over so that the joint line was 16 inches over, easy to do. And in fact, here, this one is exactly in the right spot. I can flip this over and go the other direction. And it will lock on exact, except I need to take this one interlock off and then it locks on flush here. I got the 16 inch overlap. And that's ready to accept the opposite way. So now I would just take this off Put another straight on and cut there. I've run out of straights, otherwise I would do that for you. It's that easy. It's really not difficult. You guys can do it. Thanks a lot. See you again.